So, but quantum physics, so kind of revolutionized physics at the late 1800s, early 1900s. So kind of towards the late 1800s, one guy says, you know, kind of like, well, we kind of know everything we need to know. We just need to refine our measurements. And it turns out he was really wrong, right? So turns out quantum physics revolutionized everything. And at the crux of it is it says that certain things are quantized, like the energy of an electron, for instance. What does it mean to say that things are quantized? Yeah it's, yeah, it's only specific, or sometimes we use, the, we use the word discrete. Only discrete quantities for that are possible. So if I told you I had a quantum car, and my quantum car in neutral is not going any velocity, zero velocity. In first gear, it goes 10 miles an hour. In second gear, it goes 20 miles an hour. In third gear, it goes 30. And in fourth gear, it goes 40 miles per hour. And those are the only velocities my car does. It does no other velocities. So if I was in neutral, and I popped it into first, instantaneously, I'd be going to 10 miles per hour from zero to 10. I would not have to pass through any velocities. I wouldn't speed up to 10. I'd be instantaneously doing 10. And then if I switched it to, to second gear, I'd go from 10 to 20, boom, and instantaneously go up to 20 miles an hour. And let's just say I popped it into neutral right at that moment. I'd come to an abrupt stop. It wouldn't, I wouldn't slow down to a stop. I would immediately stop instantaneously because there are no other velocities possible besides 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Those are the only possibilities. Do you think we could make a car like this? Do you think there's anything in the kind of macro world here that we live with that works like this at all? No, and that's why this was such a crazy idea that certain things could only have certain quantities. So, but that's the entire idea behind quantum physics. Very different than the classical physics. It turns out when you go to a large scale and stuff like that, everything kind of falls out, though, to look like our macro world. But at the atomic level, it does not work like this at all. So one of the early pioneers in quantum physics said, if quantum mechanics makes sense to you, then I know you don't understand it. <laughs> the whole idea is that it doesn't really make any sense. It's totally you know, counterintuitive and stuff like that. So We'll start off with some of the reasons why quantum physics came about. And the first one is called black body radiation. And black body radiation is, is you can kind of look at an object and based on the intensities of the various radiations giving, being given off by that object, you can tell, it, tell what its temperature is. This is how we tell the temperature of stars and stuff like this. And so it turns out black body radiation had a big problem though. So in black here, this is what black body radiation really looks like as a function of wavelength. You have some certain maximum intensity of a certain wavelength. As you change the temperature, like on your hand out there, so as you increase the temperature, it shifts towards lower wavelengths and you get a lot more area under the curve. At lower temperatures, you get the exact opposite. Chris? Is that like the thermal energy, like the, um, like you can see in the nighttime, you just use this like, uh, they use it like, like night vision and stuff like that? It's not that. So in this case, this would be more like akin to, uh, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna take it back. It is analogous to that. So, but I guess, yeah, obviously, you know, when you're talking like night vision and scope like that, you're talking about like really, you know, longer wavelengths of like infrared and stuff like that. Whereas when you're looking at stars and stuff like that, you're getting to much more visible and even, even ultraviolet wavelengths and stuff like that. So the problem is that, so some guys named Rayleigh Jeans came up with their lovely classical theory and their classical theory says what you see in red. And so it turns out once you start getting towards the ultraviolet region, their prediction goes to pot. So all the way up until this point matches pretty well. And then it starts to deviate a little bit, deviates a little bit, and then it's supposed to just go up to infinity as the wavelength goes to zero. And they called it the ultraviolet catastrophe because <laughs> their equation was a catastrophe. Reality was very different. As you went to a wavelength of zero, the intensity would go to zero. And so Mr. Planck, he kind of came along and he said, well, what if, the things responsible for emitting this electromagnetic radiation were oscillating charged particles. So we learned earlier that oscillating charges do give off electromagnetic waves. And so what are the, these electronic oscillators or resonators, as he termed them, so that their energies were quantized and they could only come at certain multiples of HF, where F here's the frequency and H is Planck's constant, and N can be any, any integer, one, two, three, four, five, six. As a result, excuse me, these oscillators, these resonators, could only have certain discrete values for their energy. So, and if you actually base your results instead of on classical theory, but on this, you find out that as the wavelength goes to zero, 
you find out your intensity indeed goes to zero as well. Now, Planck wasn't like this master genius who just understood reality. He just matched an equation to the data, and this is what he had to presuppose to get there. And if, you know, even if it doesn't make any sense, if this is what reality is doing and you got an equation to match it, then you've got a pretty good jump start on what's really going on in reality. So he was kind of the first one to, excuse me, propose this quantum theory, and that things were quantized, and people are just like, that's crazy, but it matches the data. So, and that kind of, the dominoes fell pretty quickly uh, in quantum physics, kind of replacing our classical Newtonian l view of things at the small level. Um, cool, this is black body radiation. It was one of the first things. So the second thing we'll see was something you guys took a more closely look at called the photoelectric effect.